Hey, good morning, folks. How's everybody on this beautiful Sunday morning? Saturday for me. Hey, uh, I got a little project to work on today. And uh, uh, it just involves a, a little appearance stuff inside my new rig. And so, hey, let's go through it. I'll give you a quick introduction to the uh, machine, and um, we will go through our project. All right, so uh, over here, I have my new rig that I built. Um, it is a multi-boot machine. Currently, it's running Windows 10. Um, it also has installed in it uh, OS Sierra, which is a Mac operating system. It also has, uh, I guess, three different distributions of Linux. And so, uh, you know, it's a multi-boot machine, and I haven't really settled on a name for it yet. Um, the original assembly had a nice red fan controller up here in the front, but that was not long for this world, so I ended up with this one here from NZXT. And uh, as you can see, it's got some blue features to it. First, I was really hung up on that, and then I got looking, and you know, look at here, the hard drive and the power light are both blue too, so yeah, I decided to just let it go. Also, the, the blue kind of goes nicely with the uh, USB 3 ports in the front. Uh, it's not the original card reader I put in either, that also failed, so I had to order a different one. And uh, this one's more simplistic, has a single SD card slot. I forget how many different cards it can read, but basically it'll do what I need it to do. I mean, it'll read the SD cards, the large ones, and then you can use the adapter to read the small ones. So, really, that's all I need. Um, up top here, it has two more USB 3 ports here. These are designed to be USB 3 ports. However, I didn't have enough headers on my motherboard. So uh, the case actually came with uh, an adapter that allowed me to adapt these ports to USB 2 which connect to the motherboard header. So I have USB 2 ports here which I use for my USB dongle for my uh, keyboard. And I have one here which comes in handy because uh, I don't think it's a big deal in Sierra, but the previous version, El Capitan, needed a USB 2.0 port to uh, install. So, that actually came in quite handy. Now, let's see here. What do we have here now? This is the view through the window, the side window in the case here. It's got... Let me turn the white lights on here. I've got a little remote right here. Let me turn the white lights on so I can show you around. All right, so we look in here. Let's just start at the top. We got an i7 processor, and we have a Corsair water cooler on it. It's a small one, 120, 140 mil. I think it's 120. Anyway, uh, it's just a single fan radiator combination up here. Uh, next to that, I have a 120 millimeter fan, and then another 120 millimeter fan. I put the Corsair LEDs, LED red fans in there case did not come with those. Oh, by the way, this is a Lian Lee case. I forget the number. If anybody cares, I can get the number for you. But this is a Lian Lee case. It's actually the second case that this computer has lived in. Well, let's see what we got here. Okay, now. So we talked about the processor, we talked about the cooler. Okay, the next to that we have 32 gigabytes of ballistics DDR4 memory. 2400 megahertz. Uh, let's see here. So what's the next thing we see when we look in the window here, right? We see this blue cable in a world of black and red cables. Right? So we're going to have to deal with that. Then the next thing we see, right when we see right in front of the window, we see this big wad of wires right here. Well, those are my uh, G4's GTX 970's. I have two of those set up in SLI mode. Here's my bridge. This brings us to the subject of today's thing. Now, I'm going to try to zoom in here. 
See how that has wires? These are the uh, auxiliary power cables for the uh, uh, PCI Express for the video cards, right? And there are two 6 pin connectors. So the way the power supply is set up, it has a single. Let me zoom back out so we can find where we are. All right, so I actually have two wires coming off the power supply. They come up in here, and one wire feeds each power, each uh, video card. Well, the way they're set up, you see they Y right off of the one connector here. It Y is off of there. Then I got it looped back around to plug into the other connector. So while that is functional, it's not very pretty to look at. So I'm going to address those problems today. And the way I'm going to do it is, for the blue USB 3 cable that goes to the card reader, um, I actually got some of this Rust-Oleum. Uh, it's uh, Rust-Oleum American Accents, they call it. I picked it up at Walmart. I went down there trying to buy the plastic paint, but they told me that they no longer carry the plastic paint because they've added this feature to the Rust-Oleum and the Krylon where it also bonds to plastic. So, yeah, it's deviating from the one video I saw that said you could actually paint your SATA cables with the plastic paint. So, we'll see how that works out on this blue cable here. So the way we're going to fix the clumped up wiring going to the video cards is we're going to use a red sleeved cable extension. Well actually we're going to use four of them, aren't we? So let me get this out of the package so we're not dealing with the glare. Yeah, so this cable extension here, it's uh, a little under a foot, 11 point some inches. Um, this here is going to plug in to the video card, right? That'll plug into the video card, and I'll be able to hide all this stuff, this unattractive stuff, hopefully back behind that grommet that's in the back of the case. So it'll all be tucked in between the motherboard tray and the back panel of the case. That is the plan. So, in keeping with that idea, if we look up here, we can also see that I have a black cable coming in to feed power to the DVD player. And so I have this black Molex connector, and there's there's the one that barely comes through the grommet, right? And then there's a wire that goes from that to feed power to the card reader. So it was unfortunate that I didn't have maybe another 3-4 inches in that run between connectors because then this this connector wouldn't show and I think it looks awful. So we're going to be dealing with that too and the way we're going to deal with that is you got it. More red sleeve connectors. One other thing I got for the DVD player um, I got a converter that goes from a Molex connector to a uh, SATA connector on the other end and we'll use that to power the DVD player so we can get rid of that other uh, that other black cable that's coming in here and that you know since it does show we'll just go ahead and make it a red sleeved one too now here's where we break from our tradition somewhat in that if you'll notice here I have I had some silver SATA cables here and then I have some red SATA cables connecting my hard drive and the DVD player to the motherboard. I really didn't plan on doing all this red sleeve cable stuff when I ordered these, so I went ahead and ordered more silver ones. So I have uh, three more silver SATA cables that we're going to put in here just to get some consistency going in our cabling. So that's most of what we're going to do, but there's one more thing that sticks out like a sore thumb in this build. And we'll go back to the white lighting steady so I can show it. Look at those blue stripes on those EVGA video cards. Now, 
I saw a lot of videos on how to paint these things. Uh, some with better results than others. Um, they all pretty much have the same warning. If you disassemble your video cards and paint them, you have voided your warranty. And I wasn't necessarily on board with that great idea. I mean, this is a new build. Only It's only been with us a couple months. So... Here's what we have for these little blue stripes is I got some of these stick-on red reflectors. Now these are a, actually a commercial trailer item. They'd be available in probably any trailer supply store or you may be able to find them if you search for stick-on trailer reflectors. So the, th the plan is, you know, we stick these reflectors on here to cover up the blue. And um, if there's ever a problem, you simply peel off the reflectors and you RMA the card. So, I think that's a better plan than to go voiding warranties. At least for now. Now, you know, a couple years down the road, we're still playing around with this thing, same hardware. Hey, why not? The warranty's gone anyway. There's nothing to lose. Unless you break it, of course. But uh, that's pretty much where we're going to leave it today with, with those modifications. So, Alright, so first thing we're going to need to do to get started here is we're going to have to uh, remove this cover. So I've taken these two thumb screws out of the side and this is ready to go. You don't need this many screws, but I put them in because I figured... It looks better to look in at screws than it does to look at holes for screws that are not there. So one screw in the back. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead and unplug that one from the motherboard. Loosen up some of this cable management going on back here so we can Get a little slack in this thing. Hopefully, we get enough slack to get that card reader slid out of there now. Let's turn. So, I've got the card reader slid out the front as about as far as I'll be able to get it. But this is a five and a quarter inch, basically adapter. And it came with it all came as one set, but it's an adapter for a smaller three and a half inch card reader. So what we're gonna need to do here is take these screws out. You gotta love a magnetized screwdriver. Okay. we can actually remove this piece set it down out of the way now you gotta kind of pull out on the sides a little bit then this cover here comes off all right then it has I think that's a type B connector I'm willing to concede I could be wrong about that. Let's we'll get it out of there. Let's go what I'm talking about. Huh? Alright, so here's the cable we're going to need to do something with, the blue cable. So we'll be painting that. And then, uh, of course, this has to be disconnected. simply so we can install our red sleeve piece instead. So, um, 
The next thing you're gonna need to do is go ahead and get these cabling loose, I guess, for the uh, DVD player. So we got that one loose, and there's our power lead. Okay, as you can see, the all the pretty cable management's in the front behind a window. And the down and dirty stuff's back here. I've done what I could out back here, but there's only so much that you can do. So, as we see here, we got a bunch of SATA cables coming down. We're going to be replacing the red ones with uh, silver ones. This is the only thing I had connected to this cable, was the DVD player. Um, since we're going to be running that off of the Molex connector, which is right here. Hmm. So, that will have to come out. And then running off all this is going to be our case lighting, our fans, DVD player, and the card reader. So, what we'll need to do here is plug this back in. So, let's see, we get our other two cables. This is the one for the DVD player. We'll get it unwrapped and installed. So that will go through this grommet here up top. And it will need to plug into one of these. I think we actually got it connected. So here's the other one, the one that we're going to use for the card reader. And that's going to give us some very welcome slack that we didn't have before for assembling all this. So, let's put this like that, I guess. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. So this also goes through top grommet. We're just going to leave these out for now, for now though because we're going to have to drag out all of those um, SATA cables. I think the next step to do is you get that painting going and then while that's drying we could be in here fooling with this. That would be the hot setup. So let's go set up some paint. Alright so I've got my little deck table here. I mean it's nothing fancy but I really don't want to ruin it for what times when I'm not painting. Um, so I did put some masking paper, just a newspaper, and uh, taped it down so that the wind can't grab it. Throw my work on the ground. Uh, this is our USB 3 cable. Anyway, it's uh, I've masked off the ends with some masking tape and uh, that way uh, we're not going to paint any of the parts that make the connections and uh, most of this like I say only a small portion of this actually shows but since I don't know exactly uh, which portion it is and whether I will route it exactly the same way I had it before I'm going to paint the whole thing so it's good practice. You know, anytime you're going to paint something, and it really doesn't matter. It's good practice for the times that it does matter. So you'll uh, just paint the whole cable, and hopefully it'll work out. All right, so I have uh, applied the first, I guess you call it the first coat, so the first side that I can paint. What I'm going to have to do is let this set up well, and then uh, I can basically turn it over and get to the part I couldn't paint before. So, best thing to do right now would be to leave it alone and go work on another part of the project. Alright, so our paint is out there on the front deck uh, drying at least the first half. The first coat on the first half of the cable I could actually paint. So, the next thing to do at this stage would be to uh, go back to this and finish it up. Um, I think you can see uh, from where I got the camera. You can see here what I need to do now is uh, 
I can go ahead and replace these SATA cables. And I don't think there's going to be much educational value in everybody watching me struggle with replacing my SATA cables. So I'll just come back when that's done and show you what I did and how I did it. And I think that'll work out a lot better. Okay, so bring you all up to speed here. Uh, these are the SATA cables I removed from the computer. And also, this is the, uh, I get a modular power supply in here. It's a Corsair RM1000. Anyway, so I no longer needed that clutter in the case, so I can take that out of there. And uh, these are the SATA cables I removed. So all this is out, and we'll set it aside. Okay, so the next thing, I went ahead and I started, uh, I haven't connected them yet. But I pushed the old uh, power wires for our uh, EVGA video cards. I took all the power wires off that were on there before, the black wadded up mess. And I just kind of tried on for to test the length and everything. Uh, the red ones seem to fit okay on the top one anyway. Uh, so it'll come out of there and it'll go something similar to this. I don't know if exactly like this, you know. I route them along here alongside the, the video card. And then out through that grommet. So that uh, we make our connections to the wadded up mess behind there where no one can see it. There's already an existing line. It's probably better than anything I'm going to be able to try to make myself for width. I don't know if I can catch it with a camera, but there are some lines already on it. So if I just take the scissors and cut along that line, that will set our width. Then all we'll have to do is come up with our length and cut our angles to kind of match what's there. Uh, and I think we got this covered. So that's how I plan to approach that. We're done with that. But anyway, I think that looks better than the blue stripes did. Alright, well here we are. It is the next morning. Uh, I made quite a bit of progress yesterday, but I had to wait to proceed further because my uh, cable that I painted, wire, cable, whatever you want to call it, the uh, USB 3 cable for the uh, card reader, uh, had not dried. It was still too tacky to mess with last night. So I let it dry overnight. I came up with this ingenious drying device, huh? Tape it up to the TV and let it hang, huh? Pretty cool. So, anyway, now, it still feels just the slightest bit tacky, but I think we can get away with it, with, with reassembling it. Um, so what I'd like to do here is kind of show you what we've accomplished so far. And, uh, and we deviated from the plan a little bit, but we'll go through that. All right, the original plan was with these uh, cable extensions. I was gonna run them off to the side and uh, go out behind the motherboard with them like we discussed. Um, however, there just wasn't enough room back there to tuck all those wires and get the back panel on. So I changed the plan a little bit. And uh, I went ahead and, even though I got wires hanging out the front of the case, I went ahead and reassembled the, or I didn't reassemble it, you know, I just put the side back on, the window. Because I wanted to see what it was going to look like when it was lit up. As you can see, I put my reflectors on my, on my video cards. That could have been executed more, a little better. For now, I'm going to leave it. I, it may bug me later and I may redo it. But, uh, yeah, I just cut them out with scissors. And I probably could have done a prettier job if I had uh, taken the time and made the effort to use uh, 
a ruler and a razor blade or something like that to cut them out. I wanted to put the side panel on just because I I was kind of excited to see what it was going to look like lit up. Let's go ahead and have a look and see what it looks like. What I thought was really cool is the way these extension cables glow because of the uh, red LED lights. So check that out. How about that? I thought that was way cool. I didn't expect that, but that sure is a nice bonus. So, you know, if you put it on the red... The other lights don't seem to... Um, other colors don't seem to make it glow like that. Let me see. Let me put it on where it'll cycle different colors. Some colors do, some don't, I guess is what I should say. But man, with that red light, it sure pops, and I like that. So, yeah, overall, I would call the, the so far, we've got, we're pretty successful in what we've tried to accomplish. Um, yeah, I did get the new uh, cable extension put in for the DVD player. I got the new one routed for the card reader. And then I have the new SATA cables put in. There's a new silver SATA cables. They're all they're all the same color now. They're all silver. And so we have some consistency there. Um, yeah, overall I think it looks pretty good. So let me get this uh, side panel off. And we'll look and see how I had to do the... Uh, extensions for the video cards yeah so what I ended up doing with those is uh, I ended up just coiling up the uh, PCI Express cables uh, down here at the bottom in front of my power supply and then just kind of tucked them under to where I could actually get these to to sit where I wanted them I put one zip tie on here I had originally bundled them up, and you can kind of still see where they're pulled together. I had them, you know, much more tightly bundled before, but I really didn't like that look. For one thing, I didn't like the zip ties. And for another, I don't know, it just looked, uh, it looked too tied up for my taste. I do have some Velcro uh, ties ordered, and when they come in, I might try messing with those some. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. I kind of like the way that looks, especially when the when it glows in the light. I think that is so cool. So uh, that's basically where we're at here. Um, overall, I'm pretty pleased with how the project has come out. And uh, so I'm going to be putting the uh, I'll be putting the card reader back in, and we'll get that new pa newly painted uh, USB three cable. It's going to get plugged in right here and uh, then we can get all the cable management done in the back I got started be happy to show you what we got as I stated before I've got five hard drives in this machine and one DVD player so I'm using all six of my SATA ports on my motherboard um, there's my five hard drives all stacked up right here and I've routed the cables in such a way that try to keep them neat and orderly damage free when we put the side panel back on as you can see this case this particular case it doesn't have a whole lot of room back here for uh, cable management and whatnot so I actually was trying to find a way to maybe route some of these up higher to make room for those um, PCI Express uh, power supply cables and then I tried uh, some other things too, but I just wasn't able to make it work. And I'm actually happier with it the way it is, so I guess it all worked out for the best. There's actually less wire back here now than there used to be, so I don't expect to have any trouble getting the side panel on. Okay, so that's where we're at. Um, so I guess without further ado, we'll, um, we'll get that uh, card reader mounted up. And uh, let's see what it looks like completed. Alrighty then. First thing.
things first. Here's a card reader. We're plug in our more legs. Alright, so here's our cable. We'll get that ready to go. Really tape that on there. <laughs> All right, let's see. Here we go. Now we're jamming. Get all the tape off this connector. All right, let's do it this way. Scratch it. Alright. So that's going to get clipped in right here. Okay. And this goes in here. And that sits there. Then we put this in here that point right get the screwdriver out Slide that in place. There are thumb screws. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I do believe that's in. We'll call that done. I guess we can move on to the cable management part of this fun project. So, no, there's not that much to do really. It's mostly done already. Okay. It'll come to me. It always does. Let me go ahead and wrap all 
this up right here. Now this doesn't show, so I'm more concerned with serviceability than looks back here. Let's spin around. And we'll give it a little test. Alright, let's turn it on. These little start of the windows. Windows. Probably so. Yeah, okay. So Windows works. Let's see if we can get into Linux. Seuss boots up okay. So let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. Okay, we're good. Mm-hmm. So with Linux, you don't want to just pull these out. Uh, we're not going to continue to run. Um, let me see here. Safely remove. Okay, we're good. And so we'll pull this. We'll check this one. Make sure the USB ports work. Yep, that one works. Pull that out. And we'll go over here. Okay, that's removed. So we can pull this out. We'll try this one. again. There we go. So we'll read it in all three. Mm -hmm. So let's remove it. Alright. You can access those drives. Okay. That's what we care about. This one should be Sierra. So far so good. Here we go. Anyway, this should be El Capitan. Well, there it is. Okay, so we can get to all our hard drive. Oh, we, there's one left we need to check. Yep. 
Yep, yep. I think we can get to it with the Mac. Let's see. Should be able to. And that is a spinning hard drive. And there it is. So. Well, I would call that a successful test. Now I'm going to put the back cover on yeah, and do it again to make sure I didn't mess anything up in the process. But that's all good. So, we'll shut this down. Put the sides on her. And then, uh, then I can test it again, I guess. Alright, cool. So, let's get the back panel on. I found the best way to do this with all that wire back there. Just kind of give it a little pressure. Let me slide it. And then double check to make sure you engage everything down at the bottom and at the top. You got it. Back where it goes. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to boot into Windows because I got a video to edit. So hey, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, I'm open to all of them. And uh, you know, if you found it useful, go ahead and hit that like button. If you thought it sucked, well, you know what to do. And then, uh, sure could use some subscribers. Hey, y'all take care.